This is a HeadGum Podcast. Yo, Serge, dude. <laughs> Happy Yo, April, man. <laughs> uh, you say rabbit, rabbit, dude? Dude, pinching a punch for the first of the month, dude. <laughs> I actually got April Fool's yesterday, dude. <laughs> yeah, dude. Uh, yeah. <laughs> my cousin tied my shoelaces together, man. <laughs> it was really funny, dude. I fell. <laughs> yeah, but I didn't, like, fall all the way down on the ground or anything, dude. I just, like, stumbled. It was kind of, it was kind of crazy, dude. Oh, silly, dude. Uh, hey, this episode is uh, our first in April. We just wanted to say thank you for that. Yeah. April it, showers. Bring. I May. honestly, I have no idea. Oh, Mayflowers. Huh. Yeah. <laughs> I thought that's, uh, I thought that was the, and Mayflowers built, oh, Pilgrim, we got to really, we got to redo this whole entire thing. Do we? I'm a little hungover. <laughs> I'm high. I'm high and scared. Uh, no, this is uh, our first uh, podcast right before um, Lonely and Horny comes out. Yeah. Right before our tour. We are hitting the road next week with two major things happening. Which is? One, uh, four shows, four yeah. different cities. Three D- of which still have tickets available. Yeah. DC, yeah. tickets still available. That's Wednesday in two days. Yeah. Brooklyn, sorry, sold out. Okay. But- Pass. Next. Come find us in the street. Let's rage. Let's hang. Yeah. Uh, Saturday. Boston, that's first good. ever live podcast in Beantown. That's a big one. That's a huge theater. It's uh, st- which means there are still some tickets left. Yeah, but they they're going fast. I assure you. Scoop them and then uh, my hometown homecoming show, Holy Pistol Wave in New Haven, the two or three Z, where we are going to be performing with Allison Williams. That's gonna be a fun one, and we may be graced by the presence of my father. What? Not in, not on stage, but. He drinks at a bar next door. <laughs> Often. <laughs> uh, I want to say eight times a week. Yeah. Like, it, it has to be at He's least He's legend that. status because he <laughs> he's never paid his tab. <laughs> yeah, where everybody knows his name and curses it. Uh, and not only that, but we're also releasing Lonely and Horny, which means the coupon code HORNY for 15% off disappears Thursday night. And honestly, if you haven't used it yet, we appreciate you. You're trying to pay... Top dollar, full price. You know that's not necessary, but... Namaste. Namaste nonetheless. Uh, And so thanks to everybody that's pre-ordered. But you can still pre-order your copy until, I believe, the first two episodes get released Friday, uh, right as as soon as it turns Friday. Oh, it's two at once? Uh, It's two a week for five weeks. And they come out, like, on Fridays? Yeah, every Friday. Really? I think so. I Honestly, I didn't know that. Yeah, so April 8th, the first two episodes come out, then the next two, the next week, and then... Wow, sweet. Onwards uh, and upwards. So buy that subscription right now. Yeah, you can buy the whole season right now for, uh, I think it's twelve seventy four. once you get that uh, 15% discount. Are we allowed to talk about that it is also going to unlock at the end of the season a behind-the-scenes Oh, yeah. Uh, video? That was something we decided. They took, we had a behind-the-scenes cameraman shoot uh, while we were shooting Lonely and Horny. Uh, and got some fun behind the scenes stuff. So he's going to be able to make like a little featurette that's going to be available to those who buy the whole season. Yeah. So if you've procrastinated, you pushed it off. April 8th is so far away, you said in March. Well, guess what? It's April 4th right now. It's happening. It's right around the corner. And if we survive a few May flights. May April 4th be with you. What's that? May April 4th, 4th be, be with, with you? you? Get the fuck out of here it with that shit. It wasn't worth interrupting the. <laughs> <laughs> the read, <laughs> yeah. No, I guess actually, it wasn't. I think I like that. Would be a good tweet. Oh, really? Yeah. I, I haven't like tweeted a joke in a few years. So I'll tweet it. Sweet. I'll tweet Love it. That. Great. May April fourth be with you. Yeah, that's pretty fun. Yeah. <laughs> if it gets a lot of play, will you credit me a little later on? I won't actually. I'll take it. Your name is in my Twitter thing. That's true. So yeah. I'll actually retroactively take credit for all of your other jokes. Yeah. I want to take credit for Nicki Minaj <laughs> butt job <of> Iraq, <laughs> which no, I gave you, me. you came up with, but I gave you the, the cojones. The emotional to... <laughs> go ahead. I do. The <laughs> spiritual green light. <laughs> I still love it. To tweet Nicki Minaj just butt dialed Iraq. Doesn't make sense, but it's sort of could yeah it could make sense it's it's not all there but i think that's what's beautiful about it uh so we did just want to briefly mention because we had a guest on uh these shows uh and as well as lonely and horny appreciate namaste can't wait to experience this excitement with everybody and hear what everybody finally has to say uh to to, while seeing these episodes we've been watching them over and over and we're excited to finally share them with everybody we got them real good for you uh but before we start this episode we still have to thank a sponsor 
This is still a podcast after all. You guys, we aren't just selling our own products. Yeah. Uh, We're selling underwear as well. These underwear are on my body right now. Amir, you're wearing the terry cloth shorts. Yeah, I'm wearing the terry cloth shorts. They also have uh, lounger pants right now, which is basically like the, the, the... Sorry, we haven't even said this episode is brought to you by MeUndies. Oh, I feel like everybody just knows at this point, right? Yeah, when like we're MeUndies, talking about... Because when we say the best underwear of all time, it's sort of just synonymous. Yeah, you know. They 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 sponsor enough episodes for us to be completely in line with their brand. We don't even have to mention them, but we probably do anyways. Uh, MeUndies.com, the most comfortable underwear and outerwear for men's and women's. There's free shipping in the U.S. and Canada. The reason it's so comfortable, it's, it's because it's made out of a material that you may or may not have ever experienced before. Modal. Modal. Modal? Modal. It is the be-all and modal. <laughs> nice, dude. Uh, so try it out. Uh, the design of the month in April is actually, it is April flowers, uh, which is pretty awesome. And very apropos to what we were talking about April earlier. April showers, though. Oh yeah, Should April showers and uh, May flowers uh, is the May design of flowers that. bring bring pilgrims. I still didn't get it right exactly. We'll wow. workshop it while other people are listening to this podcast. Uh, check them out, meundies dot com, uh, and if you go to meundies dot com slash amir or meundies dot com slash jakey, you get twenty percent off your first order plus free shipping. Get it as a gift. Somebody's birthday is coming up in April. They're a fan of our show, or they're just a fan of looking really, really stylish. It's a great way to upgrade your game. I mean, look at these underwears. Those are really nice color blue. These are just a cool adult way to walk around. Make little micro improvements in your life and start with your underwear. You really ought to. That's the part that that touches your buttholes and your peepees. My underwear doesn't usually touch my butthole. It's definitely as close as it gets, though. That's... I'm not going to argue that one. So get really nice toilet paper. That's completely unrelated to the ad. That's mm-hmm. just a little life tip. Go you just splurge for the two ply quilted picker up. Might as well. And then also get that sweet, sweet MeUndies uh, underwear. Uh, MeUndies.com slash Amir. MeUndies.com slash Jake. 20% off, free shipping. It's all that good shit, all in one. Uh, let's get started finally. This episode was so fun. Yeah. Lauren Lapkus, uh, who was in Jurassic World, she has a Netflix special. She's just one of the funniest uh, people we know. She's so, cool. So I'm glad we were able to get her on the show. Uh, the way this episode works is that there's a theme song, which is coming on right now, and then things get real. Yeah, after that. Break up with your long distance girlfriend so things get real and frankly a little coy. Change your name from Jake to Josh Cause it's time to stop being such a goddamn goy If I were you If I were you You can't get it from Matt Damon So get some advice from these two Jews um, If I were you Wow. Poppy, I liked it. That sounded that like, like it should a be a theme Clueless. Song. What'd you say? I thought it should be like, like a Clueless theme song. You know, the film with Alicia Silverstone. It of course. was also a TV show. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's true. Not with Alicia Silverstone. <laughs> oh, holy with- shit, who are you? <laughs> was I supposed to wait? Sorry. No, no, that was great. That was perfect. Lauren Lapkus. Hi. Um, are you also a Jew? No. Because the podcast, uh, the theme song referenced us being Jewish, so he might have to amend it. Because oh, the theme yeah. song is like filled with inside jokes. That it's, it must be really strange for you to hear. I got all of them, yeah. really? and I fucking need to download that song now. <laughs> <laughs> it's my new ringtone. What did it remind you of? Um, it reminded me of like it, a Disney, it, a Disney show oh. kind of vibe. Oh, right, like cool. the opening theme song yeah. to, to like, like an iCarly. Yes, gotcha. Like cool. a pie in the face laughter kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, those are good. A what would you do ask Mark? What Summer's would you do as Nickelodeon? <laughs> she said Disney. <laughs> All right, yeah, um, get it right or pay the price. What's that from? <laughs> That's oh. from Salute Your Shorts, which is also a Nickelodeon mm-hmm. show. In addition yeah. to what I said, which was a Nickelodeon. Wait, show. am I in the wrong now? <laughs> <laughs> it's always two against one when it's a three-person <laughs> pod, and we have to figure out what's up. I just never want to be on the one side. Yeah, you already were. With, oh rough. wait, no, never mind. Forget it. Fuck me. I'm always a loser. Uh, the that one that song was written by. Josh Friedman, who signed his name, the one-eyed kid, and he said, we briefly met after your last show in Boston. Amir said, sweet eye patch, highlight of my life. I remember that. I kissed that guy. 
in the eye <laughs> on the cheek i think yeah. really i remember being really taken aback that you brought up the eye patch so quickly you have to address the elephant on his face and then i did it in a cool way i thought <laughs> Good Lord. i actually like that you said something about it i bet not enough people do He'd yeah a lot of people refreshing. are like oh like, hey dude looking good yeah. or like yeah or right, those... they compliment something else. Like, you have a lovely smile. Like, right. they're trying to say, like, your eye's not good, but your but, teeth are nice. But if it was something more subtle, I feel like that's the way you should do it, is not address it. Do you feel like if you had an eye patch on, that you can tell that people are only looking at your one eye when they talk to you? <laughs> <laughs> you kind of get, like, cross-eyed toward the one. Yeah. <laughs> well, isn't that what usually happens with eye contact anyway? Yeah, your you know, eyes like, are always... back like, and forth. When like, you notice that, it's insane. Yeah, it really freaks me out. Yeah. We're doing it now, and Just, I'm like, scared. It's... Just getting back and yeah, forth. Yeah, like, I then know. wonder, like, how I ever did it before. Like, when I'm aware of it, my eyes are, like, going back and forth, and I'm like, I can see their eyes, and I'm like, why, why? Like, I feel like I can't talk anymore. <laughs> yeah. What if you guys are shifting at the exact same time? <laughs> you never see each other's eyes. I will say on Dawson's Creek, Katie Holmes uh, was like the queen of acting with that movement because oh. it shows like a level of intensity and drama. Yeah. And she's like, "What are you doing, Dawson?" And yeah, like, <laughs> and then like the little the smirk. Oh yes. man, Joey Potter. <laughs> yeah, good lord, guys. Were you a Joey or a, the other blonde one, uh, Michelle Williams? But I, what was her name? Jen. Jen. Uh, I was a, I was a Joey. You were a Joey. Yeah, full on. Were you a Brad or a the blonde Melody in Hey Dude? Wow. wow, Brad, for sure. Really? Brad was like the beautiful. Well, I always liked brunettes. Like, I thought like they looked cool because I didn't have. I, my hair was very blonde when I was little. So you were the brown hair. So I was like, wow, always. it must be cool. Like Kelly Kapowski. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Kelly, I, think I liked them both. Kelly sort of bucked the trend because she was, quote unquote, the hot one and the brunette. That's true. Where it's usually like the blonde hot one and then the like the silly brown haired girl. Yeah. But Zach was really hot and he was blonde. <laughs> yeah, I guess you're right. There Although no he had frosted tips. Too. Were they frosted? Yeah. Remember? I mean, it was. It wasn't real, but it wasn't like he didn't have like the Pacey. <laughs> now we're going back to Dawson's Creek. Remember when Pacey frosted his tips? Of course, I remember when <laughs> Pacey frosted his tips. Uh, thanks for coming on the show, Lauren. Thanks for having me. Uh, this is an advice podcast, so people will email us. Uh, they're just so desperate that they're seeking our guidance. Great. What do we know? I've Let's been find that. out. <laughs> Not a lot, actually, <laughs> as it turns out. Um, so we're going to give these real emails from real people, fake names, you know, just to preserve their anonymity. Mm-hmm. Uh, could you possibly start us off with giving me a... Wow, really stalling on this. You're trying to find the question right now? I'm trying to figure out if it's a guy or girl. Uh, uh, no, it's a guy's name. Okay. okay. A fake guy's name. Paul. That's... Beautiful. You made that up off the top of your head. <laughs> At some point, someone didn't make up the name Paul. Yeah. Cool. Paul. It really stuck, too. Last name? Bildis. <laughs> Paul Bildis. That's, it's cool if Paul's a contractor. Oh, yeah. He's hey, like, Paul. Hey, Bildis. Bildis. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Uh, let me start off by saying I absolutely love my girlfriend. Wow. She's amazing in every way possible. However, recently we had a fight about something, and I just can't seem to let it go. I was joking with her one time and asked her if if she was offered $500, would she make out with a random guy while still dating me? And she said, and I quote, of course I would. It would be dumb not to. Then I continued and asked her, would she sleep with a random person for $500? And she said, it depends on whether she knew him or not. She'd sleep with a stranger, but not a guy she knew. Cool. Whoa. This has gotten to me extremely. (laughs) (laughs) Extremely so. Uh, I can't stop thinking that my girlfriend would do anything for money while still with me. Am I being a diva for thinking people (laughs) should have some moral basis and not sell their bodies for money? Or should I break up with her? Love the show. Toda. Love Paul Bildis. 21 male. Okay. Wow. What What's you your think? gut reaction? First I, thoughts. The first part of it, I agree. 500 bucks to make out with someone. If he also knew about it, it'd just be kind of like, it is it is kind of almost stupid not to. <laughs> yeah. It's just free That's money kind of like for something that doesn't really thing. matter. Like, baby, why don't you do it and we'll go out to a really nice day? Yeah, like, yeah. That's cool. If you like use the money for the greater good of the relationship. Yeah. I don't know. The sex part's weirder because I... I mean, 500 bucks doesn't seem like enough for that. 
And if like if you're <laughs> like if you're getting paid to have sex, like I need it to be more than five hundred dollars. Yeah. And also like it's also like the idea that she only wanted to do it with a stranger made less yeah. sense than doing it with someone she knew. Right. Mm-hmm. That was a sort of a turn for me. Yeah. So she's like, I want to be a prostitute, not someone who fucks <laughs> friends for money. I don't know. It just seems weird. What's the difference between those two? I really? don't know. But well, yeah. Well, then she wouldn't have to see the stranger anymore. It's sort of like a nice way to make a quick buck. Yeah. And it's not yeah, weird and like the among, I mean, I don't think any of this, I think the, pro, like, it's not going to happen. So he should just not worry about it. Yeah. Yeah, he shouldn't break up with her. Yeah, what world is he worried? Like, I've seen some porn that starts off with, like, a guy giving girl uh, money to have sex with them. But that's not real life. Right. Maybe this guy has, like, $500 burning a hole in his pocket. And he's, like, tempted (laughs) to use it in this way. Uh, just just as a weird test yeah. for his girlfriend. So girls are into it. Yeah. It's okay. like the Zappos thing. You hear Zappos offers their employees, new employees, $5,000 to quit. And no. then, so it's like, oh, we only keep the ones that really want to be around. That's wow. What, we did a video about that. Like, I, I, first date, I slid, slide $500 to a girl. Like, I'll give you $500 to leave. And she just instantly takes it and walks away. <laughs> so maybe this guy's doing that. He's like some sort of eccentric billionaire. But he's like... He's basically saying my my girlfriend is one dare away from f- cheating on him. Yeah, not dare though. Uh, money scheme. <laughs> are, are you with a lover? I'm not. Okay. Yeah. So, but imagine last time you were with a lover. Yeah. And somebody offered you, whether it be your lover or somebody else. Stop F- saying lover. This is I just a creepy want to know term. With a lover. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, I do think I would. It's a it's a sensitive subject to bring up to someone because you're you're daring them to hurt your feelings a little bit. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like just being like, who who of our friends do you wish you could have sex with? Like, you yeah. don't you don't want to know you the answer. Really to that. don't, and you de- you definitely don't want to know the lowest amount they would do it. For. Yeah. So like, you should have just started at like a really high number. Like, <laughs> yeah. all right, I understand ten thousand dollars to fuck someone. Yeah, I was gonna say ten thousand. Yeah. Like, what's your best price? Yeah. <laughs> is not five hundred is low. The makeout thing though, that really doesn't seem like a big deal to me. That one, I feel like he should not care about. Right. Making out for you. Well, is just what like friends hugging. does he have? Well, like, who that cares? Are, like, throwing this money around like what scenario exists in his mind that this girl gets approached and i would do it what i would do it i would absolutely do it just to shake shit up a bit like the joker let's see (laughs) maybe she's offended by like the premise of the question and she just is kind of fucking with him oh yeah maybe she's smarter and better than you no that's not possible (laughs) this guy is perfect i love that he ends he's like this has gotten to me extremely (laughs) (laughs) he did say he was teasing her Right. So maybe she's teasing him back. Also, it, he's 21. Mm-hmm. I feel like he's being dramatic. Oh. Like, it feels like, if I don't know, maybe if you were, like, married to the person or if it was, like, more really serious relationship, you'd been together a long time, that could be more offensive. Yeah. But it sounds like, yeah, it's not that big of a deal. She, she's a, she's young. She's, like, in college or whatever. Like, yeah, yep. she'll, she'll, that 500 bucks is free money. for $500 is a lot of money when you're, like, yeah. 20. Yeah. Shit. Totally. I remember when I'm I was so in, glad we're all older and richer now. <laughs> like five hundred doesn't phase me. I honestly, I'll, I need I'll, more to fuck a stranger. Oh, five hundred four at least. <laughs> I remember when I was in high school, I like was joking kind of with my girlfriend about having a threesome, mm-hmm. and she joked back that if we were going to do it, it would have to be with another guy. And I was instantly like, oh, <laughs> "You're disgusting." <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> like, this is something he opened this door. Yeah. He said $500 to kiss a stranger. <laughs> you better say no. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I would do it. Uh, what? Whore. <laughs> like, you made it Vile up. Vile woman. <laughs> it's his hypothetical. And the second she answered his rhetorical question, he got offended. Uh, so, specifically, uh, am I being a diva? For thinking that she should have some moral basis and not sell her body for money, it's kind of an Feels overreaction. Like he knows what he's at that one. <laughs> yeah, that's a very loaded question. Yeah. Uh, or should I break up with her? Two very extreme options that he's giving us. Yeah, I think it's he a just, multiple choice where we don't want to answer either one. Yeah, he just has to relax a little bit and not take it quite so seriously. I don't think she's gonna. I bet if like push came to shove, she probably wouldn't have sex with someone for five hundred dollars. Yeah, no, it's scary. So you gotta you gotta wonder though if somebody did that. If you were in a relationship and somebody offered your girlfriend five hundred dollars to kiss somebody, if I was in a relationship and a girl like way hotter than my girlfriend <laughs> wanted to kiss me, I might do it <laughs> for free. Yeah, it's just but no. But if, but she, like, said, what's if the... she said I'll do it for five hundred dollars, would you be okay with it? 
if I was with somebody and she said I somebody is offering me five hundred dollars to yeah you're like I at guess, a bar and like well I have enough money yeah. that I'd be like I'll give you six hundred dollars I just I just want yeah I just want exclusive uh, yeah. exclusive right to match <laughs> I want first matching you have to take it all to me <laughs> I have right first refusal uh, all right so chill out dude yeah man. Come on, bro. Don't Come on, Paul. <laughs> yeah, what kind of name is Paul, too, dude? What an idiot. <laughs> and Bilbis? Bilbis? What is that? <laughs> like, what? <Greek? laughs> um, I realized I never really introduced you. I just said Whatever. your name, but people don't. What if people don't know who you are? How Probably could they do. not? <laughs> How would our fans know you? Um, we have a lot of like mutual buddies. Yeah. I mean, they might know me from, uh, I do a podcast on the Earwolf Network. They might know me from Comedy Bang Bang or my podcast with special guest Lauren Lapkus. Yeah. Or they might know me from Orange is the New Black or <gasps> Jurassic World. Or Oh, like shit. I'm also an actor. Ever so. heard of the most popular movie ever, you guys? <laughs> yeah. I yeah. Was I'm in, in it, you idiot. <laughs> <laughs> no. But your part was, really, was, was. was really funny in that <laughs> oh, movie. Oh, thank you. When uh, Jake Johnson goes in to kiss you. Yeah, it's great. If you guys haven't seen Jurassic World. <laughs> no spoilers. All right, Something all right. funny happens in that movie. That's a good one. Isn't that funny? Like, imagine if you heard that line three years ago. Your, li- your little part in Jurassic World was really funny. <laughs> yeah. When Jake Johnson tried to kiss you, it seems like a dream you had. Yeah, no, it definitely seems very fake. <laughs> but I lived it. <laughs> where, would it where did they shoot it? <laughs> Um, in Hawaii and New Orleans. Oh shit! Yeah. Oh, what? Where in New Orleans? What part? We shot at a NASA. Um, oh, that's what you call right. it? Yeah. yeah, that's dope. Man, and that was like cool. a, like a real NASA. Yeah, we had to get like NASA clearance. Like I had to get like a card that was like a NASA approved thing to get. That's in. the coolest. And then it was just literally like a sound stage on the NASA base or whatever, which just seems weird. Yeah. Like And like they're doing something really important over there and then right here, like a fake. Here's all the scientists you, figuring out how to get to Mars <laughs> in case the planet gets too hot. Yeah. You go play with the dinosaurs. <laughs> There's a fake ch- scientist here. <laughs> There's a chimpanzee in a chair spinning around very quickly. <laughs> Please ignore that. Uh, all right. Give us another guy's name. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm going to have more fun this time. Whoa. Uh, Bartholomew. <gasps> nice. <laughs> you did have fun. Yeah. Let's dial it back. Okay. Yeah. Bart. <laughs> that was actually good. Yeah, yeah. All right, Bart. Last name? <laughs> you did not. <laughs> How dare you? Simpson. <gasps> Bartholomew Simpson. What an now unfortunate name. Uh, his parents didn't want to get... <gasps> Don't call me Bart, please. <laughs> uh, all right. Bartholomew writes... Hey guys, I wrote in a little while ago, but my situation got a lot worse. Whoa. To summarize, I'm in college with a tight group of five friends slash future roommates. I have all uh, sorry, I have had a huge crush on one of the girls since we met, and she recently ended a long term relationship. As it turns out, she's into me as as much as I am into her. Here's where things get messy. We went on a date, of course, and think uh, and are crazy about each other. Everyone else in the group finds out. And they are furious. They are being passive aggressive in person and online and saying repeatedly (laughs) that we're going to, quote, ruin the group. We don't think that at all and are hurt by the lack of support. Honestly, we just want to be happy and excited about the new relationship, but they're making this miserable. What should we do? Am I in the wrong? Mm -hmm. Thanks, Bartholomew. All right. Okay, Barry. He's ruining the group unfortunately I, this is a nice little like break from the last question because the last question that guy seemed like he was in the wrong but this one i think the group's in the wrong i agree i think this what what kind of thing like you're ruining the group <laughs> they're ruining the group yeah. the group could have a couple and they're they're all mad most groups have a couple i don't get why people feel upset <laughs> about this kind of thing like who cares who anyone's dating or what they're doing i really don't care <laughs> ever like, I, I, about it's anyone. very rare that i'll like freak out over someone dating someone like i just don't really care right like it might be interesting for two seconds like oh really they're together okay whatever yeah i just it doesn't my, affect me but you don't feel business. like their relationship might do something it's not gonna <laughs> hurt me yeah. and my friendships this yeah. is like a microcosm <laughs> of people who don't want gays to get married they're like you can't do that you're ruining the group okay. yeah. America. Uh, <laughs> and it's true. Like you, but you two being together will ruin something for me. Yeah. And you're like, yeah. how? Because I don't want to know that. <laughs> now I know it. I yeah. Mean, yeah. Maybe it's that unco- like being uncomfortable with like 
because like when you're a group of friends you all feel kind of like siblings and it's like a weird thing when two people hook up because you're like we're not yeah. like that with each other we're we're friends like if my brother was like oh i'm hooking up with our sister i'd be like oh okay <laughs> i can see that's the, a little the gross. family <laughs> <at that point. laughs> but i'd get over it yeah well you'd have to this stuff happens all the time though like whenever there's a group of guys and girls everything's good and then inevitably like two people hook up yeah so i understand that everybody's a little anxious like oh well there's guys break up up, then we're not gonna like all hang out Uh, but it's like the group dynamic is over now it's already happened the two people fell for each other that already interrupts the these are future roommates he's talking about or at least that's what he called them so maybe he's worried about that oh they're all gonna live together Hmm. that's what they say guys and the girls how about that Seems like a recipe for disaster already. That's a little too new age. That's actually our new show on Fox, Recipe for Disaster. (laughs) Oh, that's really cool. So we should all be chefs. What? We're chefs who are living together in culinary school. Yeah, and it's September 11th, but we don't know anything. 2002. (laughs) Right. So it's fine that we don't know So it's not about the relationships going around. No. No, it's a huge national tragedy. Everything goes, yeah. It's a much bigger deal than what you think it'll be. (laughs) Oh, cool. Uh, that actually does sound pretty dope. I'd watch that. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so convoluted. It's they didn't like the TV networks didn't have time for a, a rom com and a disaster yeah. TV show. And they're all like bread chefs. So when it's like things go awry, it's spelled like A apostrophe R Y E, and then like the posters, everyone as yeah. seeds, little seeds in this rye bread. That's cool. And, and the yeah. seeds go awry. Yeah. Right, exactly. <laughs> and it puts everyone in a sourdough mood. Oh, <laughs> that's no. good. Yeah, <laughs> that's the uh, no, that's good for the alt poster. Like if we want to like market this abroad, like we're trying to think like four mm-hmm. quadrant. Where will this play? China, India, of course. Thinking something with like a, a roll. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, you're still they thinking of They were finally bread. on a roll. <laughs> oh, suddenly, dot, that's dot, dot. Real, yeah, yeah. We're, they were suddenly oh. on a roll. Dot, and, dot, dot. Suddenly things and went And one awry. person has to step up and be a hero. <laughs> <laughs> Sandwich? <laughs> yeah. Keto. Gy- gyro. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, it also so could be a Subway be sub a is like a hero. Yeah. Oh, that's Philly. Good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, we're so over time. So did that <laughs> help you? <laughs> anyway, the group's good. Uh, uh, I think, yeah, we both think, we all think, I think it's safe to say we all think that your friends are wrong. Yeah. Have, uh, uh, do you ever experience being this or seeing it in your group of friends? I, I've personally ruined many. <laughs> Any group we've ever been in, I ruined. <laughs> I've hooked up with guys. I fucked girls. I've ruined my relationship with my but own parents. This is parents. how you make friends in college and stuff. You meet one group of people, you ruin it, and you go on <laughs> to another. And you are the video game rampage. You go from city to city, destroying things. I guess I've done the thing where I dated someone in the group and then we <gasps> broke up. And then now the group is kind of separated a little bit. Like where it's like, oh, they hung out with him and I wasn't there. Kind yeah, of thing. they cho- They had to choose. But but then you just go like, whatever. I don't know. Like I just don't think it's that big of a deal. It seems like, like- it, this could also be your the love of your life, and like you'd be giving it up to like be friends with some people you don't even talk to in two years. So yeah. it's very like- true. They could end up being married and then looking back like remember when all of our friends thought we might yeah. ruin the group that's their yeah. best man speech uh so you're continuing to ruin the group uh i can't stand Wasted away. with a glass of champagne <laughs> the death of the group <laughs> and the beginning of your beautiful life together ruins the group if you guys have a baby the group is going to be forever changed this happened in friends did, yeah. uh, did Chandler and Monica that. ruin the group? Did Ross and Rachel ruin the group? Or did they make that group? Yeah. They Come on! It. They ruined it. <laughs> Chandler and Monica were good, but Ross and Rachel did How about affect when the Rachel group. and Joey tried to date? That, that was not a group. Yeah, that, that, ruined ruined the, the group. that ruined the show. <laughs> ruined. I mean, at that point, they were just like pulling two names out of a it hat, was weird. hoping for the best. Yeah. Who would be the weirdest duo of friends hooking up? Phoebe and... Literally, Ross, anybody. Yeah. <laughs> Phoebe and Ross didn't they almost hook up in like a, one of the flashback episodes? Oh, I don't know. What about Phoebe and Chandler? That might be the weirdest. Yeah, he's so type A. <laughs> How's he gonna do Which it? This is my other show. Yeah, it's a he's guy, so a typing type a. teacher. Yeah, <laughs> he's a, he works at a blood bank. Wow, these ideas are great. I know, right? <laughs> uh, all right, let's. Uh, we're gonna take a break, and then we'll be right back with more Lauren and Jake and me. I guess. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Can you leave this in, too? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you as well to the Tracker.com for sponsoring this episode. Yeah, but what Tracker do, though? Uh, I'll tell you what it does. It tracks shit. That's why it's called the Tracker. Yeah, well, I don't need that because I never 
lose anything. Oh, oh no! Your wallet's on the floor. Yeah, <laughs> it is face up on the uh, floor, and all the cards are out of it. Uh, if you've ever lost your, I don't know, phone, a uh, 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 wallet, keys, anything that makes you feel like a real doof or fool for misplacing, mm-hmm. uh, the tracker is for you. It's a coin-sized device that locates misplaced anything's bags, computers within seconds. You just pair it with your smartphone. Attach it to anything, and you can find the precise location uh, with a with a button. Right. And if you are somebody like me who doesn't like to admit that they are forgetful and lose things, yeah. you at the very least know someone who is forgetful and who loses things. Yeah. So the tracker makes a really great gift. Yes. Because it, when we said you misplace a lot of stuff, there's probably somebody out there uh, that you're thinking of that pops into your mind. Yeah. So check out the, the tracker.com. And now... Because you guys are such fans of ours, we wanted to hook you up with 40% off your first tracker device if you go to thetracker.com and use promo code if I were you. Hey, um, when you said there's somebody that comes to your mind when you think about somebody who loses stuff all the time, who comes to your mind? I forget. <laughs> uh, no, I have what is known as a great, great, great uncle. He's 131, and he's wow. just constantly losing shit. Of course. I mean, it's such a feat that he is even alive. Yeah, and if he had the tracker, this coin-sized little GPS device, uh, he would be able to find all this stuff. Uh, he just needs a smartphone as well. Oh, and the a cool thing about the tracker is that it works both ways. So let's say you have your keys, but you can't find your phone. Mm. You can ping it, and your phone would be found as well. Wow, that's cool. So if you lose anything and you want to find everything, check out the tracker.com. And use promo code if I were you uh, for forty percent off. That way, they know we sent you. Uh, should we get back to the episode? Yeah, but you know what, everybody, if you haven't already bought a ticket to yeah? our DC, uh-huh. Boston, or New Haven show, yeah? then why don't you stop listening to the podcast right now? <laughs> well, <laughs> I don't even care if they don't yeah. live in those cities. What if they're far, far away? Yeah, if they're far, far away. <laughs> yeah. But That's, if they live in, like, Vermont and they didn't buy a ticket to the Boston show, you're then I'll mad. be pissed. Do you want to set a radius right now? Like, you're pissed zone? Yeah. What do you want to say? Within... If you live in Boston... Give me a mileage. If you live Mass- All right. 300, with, if you live within 300, 300 miles, miles of, of the Massachusetts, cities, yeah. <laughs> you should be there. Oh, of Mass... Even of Western Mass. It's, it's so like, if you live in Pittsburgh. 300 miles of anything that touches, touches. a part of Mass... Because... If you can get to Massachusetts in 300 miles, yeah. then what's it, another... Six-hour drive, eight-hour drive. How long... Yeah, what is the drive? How long does it take? Uh, I think if you live within 200 miles, you should be there. Yeah. No excuses. <laughs> what if you're, like, busy, you have a job the next day, or, like, a big test or an exam or something else planned? I'll help you study for the test. During the show? During the show. So if it's, like, a chemistry test, you yeah. take, like, a couple minutes off and just... I know a lot of Flashcards and stuff. Yeah. Spanish, Latin, same. Span- I know way more about Spanish than I do Latin, but I, do- I can hold my own in- <laughs> when it comes to Latin. So you would help somebody study for that as well? I would help study for a Latin test. I mean, I don't need to teach the lesson plan. I just need to teach someone how to effectively exactly. study. Exactly, yeah. So come to these shows, uh, whether you want to learn Latin or you just want to hang out and party with us. It's yeah. going to be a fun time. Uh, all right, let's go back to Lauren. And we're back. Woo! Woo! Where were you born and raised? Oh, wait, let us guess. Do you know? Um... I do have a guess. I have no idea. I have a pretty good guess, yeah. too. I, well, I've, I've been narrowed down to two states. Okay. Really? What are they? Illinois and New York. Oh, okay. I, mine is um, Oklahoma. I'm not, I'm not oh, going to Oh, that down. is such a fucking stretch. Fuck you, first of all. <laughs> <laughs> um, you're right. With Illinois or New York? Illinois. Is that right? Yeah. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. Illinois? I just have that vibe, you know. Uh, I was born in Chicago and raised in Evanston, Illinois, where Northwestern University is. Yeah. Definitely. This makes a lot more sense and, than Tulsa. <laughs> yeah, that and it. then I uh, lived in Chicago, went to school in Chicago, DePaul. Maybe that's what I'm thinking, like you're a Chicago comedian. Yeah, and I started there with all my stuff. Do you know Tim Baltz? Yeah. Isn't he the best? He's <laughs> one of the funniest people ever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So everyone should watch him on Bajillion Dollar Properties on CISO. He's Are you on really that? Funny. I did a guest spot up, but he's a regular on it. He's yeah. Really great. I yeah. feel like I should see it. Oh, wait, I don't know. Didn't you do a voice in animals? Yeah. The fish. I was. Um. I did a 
the pigeon and a dog. Oh, but my pig- friend Mary was a fish. That's what it – because yeah. Mary and Tim did that scene with the fish. Yes, yes, yes. Gotcha. Were you at the premiere? Yeah. Oh, me too. Oh, sweet. Yeah, this cool. is the part of the show where we plug other people's projects. <laughs> I really animal, – animals is so fucking it funny. It is really funny. I guess we're all tangentially involved in animals, so that's okay. But let's try to keep it on brand. Yeah. Okay. The bajillionaire uh, <laughs> thing, we aren't in that one. I was just helping Tim get noticed. Yeah, I like Tim. Tim's great. <laughs> He's awesome. uh, so then from Chicago, you went to New York? I did, yeah. I lived in New York for like a little over a year. So you did then... all the comedy scenes. Chicago, yeah. New York, and LA. Yeah. And? <clears throat> Rank them. Okay. Um. <laughs> Hottest dudes. Hottest dudes. Um, uh, there's, it's just, <laughs> Your face all, dropped. They're all medium, you know? It's just they're all medium comedy. across the board. Um, it's hard to compare, actually. I would say that, not talking about hot dudes anymore, but yeah. um, <laughs> they're I would all say sexy. <laughs> they're also sexy. I just love them all. Um, but I do think that they offer different things. Like, I think Chicago is a really great place to start because it's really about the art form. Yeah. And then New York is like a place to get experimental and oh, like shit. live it up a bit. And then LA is the place to like get a job. <laughs> <laughs> get your shit together. Yeah. It's been eight years. Are you going to fucking do something with your life? You're still in Chicago for Christ's sakes. <laughs> Yeah, nobody ever goes the other way around. Like, I started yeah. in L.A. and now I live in Chicago. Yeah, it's does that rare. ever happen? I think it does from time to time. But it's, it, it's, I mean, it's the best place to get your training. So if you're, even if you're from L.A. and you want to go get like really good training, I would uh, say so in Chicago, the beginning you're in but, Chicago. You go to yeah, Chicago. but if you're already establishing things out here, it makes sense to keep doing that. So if you're already in L.A., just stay. Those are the I three. So. Is there a fourth city? What's like the distant fourth? Um. Detroit has like a second city and like they have a whole deal over there. Detroit. That's cool. Yeah. Wow. But I don't really like Tim. I think Tim might be from Detroit or maybe not. Tim Robinson and Sam Richardson. They're both from there and they're both really talented guys. I I guess it's like where the most people went to high school. It uh, becomes the fourth city, which unfortunately is Los Angeles. (laughs) What do you mean? (laughs) Los LA is third and fourth. That's right. All right. Cool. (laughs) Um, your Netflix special. Yeah, it. What uh, is it? it? When is it? When is it? Why it debuts it? March 11th. It's called. It's after March 11th. If you're oh, listening to this, it's, it's after on March Netflix. 11th. Go watch it right now. It, you it's can for Evs. You can just go to Netflix.com. Yeah, and yeah. Then sign up for an account. What do you want to sign in? Who doesn't you have a Netflix? have one, yeah. everyone. <laughs> oh, right, of course. And if you don't have one, then somebody else's Netflix account oh. is already logged into your. Absolutely. Everyone's got it. We're you all have access. Good. We're all good at this point. So what's it called? It's called The Characters. This is a series of eight uh, specials. They're all sketch comedy specials, and each one is done by a different alternative comedian. And they're basically, they, Netflix like gave us each free reign to do whatever we wanted wow. with 30 minutes. So. They're very different and fun. and Oh, so every episode is a different human. Yes. So yours is just the Lauren episode. Yes. Wow. Is so. it all like on stage or is it like five different? Wait, first of all, is it five different characters? Um, I, You can do as many as you wanted. I think I have six in mine. I'm not sure right now. but um. And they're all different sketches or is it like you on stage? It's different sketches like in, on location, like different like oh, s- places and um. Like there's some through line to mine, and but each person's is totally different, and I haven't seen them all, so I don't really know what that. I mean, by this point that you're listening to this, I will have watched them, but yeah, totally. Um, no, I'm totally gonna get around to watching them. <laughs> no, I mean, like for sure, like I want to, like I Who's, support everyone. <laughs> aside from you, who are you most excited to see? Well, I'm just. Who's the hottest other guy in it? Um, oh, damn God, it. You're just obsessed. <laughs> I just want to know who the hot guy is. And if they're hotter than me. <laughs> I will say everyone involved is very funny. I'm really excited about all of them. I'm not just saying that as like a, you know, cool They found the right thing. Game. Yeah. But uh, John Early and Kate Berlant each have specials and they're both so funny and friends of mine and I love them. So I'm really excited to watch theirs. Cool. So, yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah. Sketch comedy. Yeah, man. It's fun. Yeah. First Netflix round of doing that. Yeah. And so how do people really find cool. it on Netflix? Netflix. It's just com. called the... Ca- yeah. And you go to the characters is the, the name characters. of the And series. you play a rat and a pigeon? Yep. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you're being typecast. I know. I know. I'm always playing pigeons in everything. Because you were that right? in Jurassic World too. Yeah. I was a rat. Yeah. That? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that worked for NASA. <laughs> that Jake Johnson tried to kiss. Yeah. It was so weird of him. Oh. <laughs> Everyone was like, why? Why is he doing that to that rat? Uh, do you have time to answer a few more questions? Sure. Hell yeah. What time do you have to leave? I have to leave at 
two. Nice. Perfect. What's the rest of your day looking like? So do we. I have to go do a thing at the YouTube space Whoa. later. That's, oh, shit. Out in Venice? Yeah, it's so far. It is really far. You should leave now. Okay, great. <laughs> <laughs> if you have to be there tomorrow, you should leave now. Yeah. Mm. It's this thing called Vox. It's like supposed to be kind of cool. They they actually, all the interviews I saw were like with like Obama and like Bill Gates and stuff, but they're doing stuff that's Barack lighter. Or... Yeah. Uh, yeah, Barack. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Or Malia. <laughs> yeah, I just call Malia Obama. <laughs> <laughs> that thing about Obama and your friends with Malia Harvard. Obama that'd be a really kind of like nice way to hint that you hang out with the president yeah, yeah. I was yeah, with yeah, Obama, Obama. <laughs> his daughter <laughs> still pretty cool very cool <laughs> all right relax I'm just saying Malia's cool yeah <laughs> dude well who's Bernie Sanders daughter dude he only has a son that's amazing how old is he <laughs> <laughs> he, I saw a picture of him, and he looks like he's not a lot younger than Bernie Sanders. Oh, really? Yeah. He's actually 94. How old is Bernie yeah. Sanders? 74. 73. Oh, really? Or, uh, 73 or 74. That's interesting, actually. Yeah, like, you want that guy running, running the country at age 80? <laughs> I mean, he's already well, senile. He would be the oldest president of all time. What would happen if a uh, president got dementia or something? Would they have to be usurped? I oh. think they would probably... My guess is that they would like be pressured to resign. Yeah. And I think oh, that happens with like Supreme Court justices who are usually, you know, they have like life terms. Yeah. But if they sort of like see their mind and their health fading, they, they'll they retire. The, yeah. pro- the problem is Bernie's running mate. I think he, he said he was going to choose his uncle. <laughs> and <laughs> his Richard uncle Sanders. is a wee bit old. His he's uncle 95. is 112. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's not, he's not like the good one. 12. Years old. He's Actually, like the guy where it's like, old. it's noticeable. I'm about to bring something gross and unfortunate, but here I go. Is it teeth um, related? <laughs> no, I saw a news article yesterday though, about a 94 year old man who molested two children and he got, he's going to face possibly 60 years in jail. I'm like, what are you even doing? It's like, <laughs> yeah. You know, just, just a life. Case. Like, it's just like, <laughs> you're just done. Like, you're in here now. You die in jail. <laughs> you're dying, like, it just seems so weird. weird to even give it a number and also, like, weird to commit a crime. Like, ugh, it, it probably helps him to feel a little bit better. Not that he deserves to, but he's like, well, I didn't get a life sentence. It's yeah. only 60 <laughs> yeah, yeah, years. Yeah. I feel like if you commit a crime when you're older, not, uh, older than 90, you should just be dead. Like, yeah, you, you should, they should just make you dead. They should dead. kill you. Yeah, death <laughs> penalty for 90 and above. Like, There's right, not really much we can do. You live yeah. the full life. What am so I going to repair? Gonna... No, like, you're pretty much set in your ways at this yeah. point. Yeah. And you did a, have a whole life. Yeah. We're going to cut you short. Yeah. Also, do you think there are a lot of really old people in jail? I feel like that's not only really a thing you hear about, but like that must be so strange. Like they have to get care. And that's a really like, that. like I would. I, that's a cool piece of trivia to know. Who's the oldest incarcerated person? Yeah. There must be like 80 and 90 year olds. Or the in person there. who's been there the longest. Like if someone got life and they were really young. Right. Yeah. Like if he's lived in jail for 70 years, 75 that years. Suck. But that does have to happen. <laughs> <laughs> what, what would I do to deserve that? <laughs> But, like, do you start, you know, people think just, like, getting hot meals and stuff, like, that costs money. But, yeah, what if people, like, full-on need medicine and shit? Right. Or, like, someone, like, change their diaper or something. That's why I, I, I think they just don't deal with it and they just let them suffer. Yeah. Capital punishment's real bullshit. The jails are privatized. I mean, you guys know, <laughs> everyone knows I'm a, uh, I'm a cruise canvasser, right? <laughs> what is his policy? Hmm. <laughs> I'm not 100% sure. He wants to press the button that'll lift up all the gates on jails. Let the prisoners back in. I think he we'll probably supports something one. like bringing back firing squads or something. <laughs> that makes sense. That's cool in a way. Uh, all right. We have a question from a lady. Finally. Ugh, I've been wondering if that was going to happen. It's about... Um, <laughs> oh, never mind. It's a guy. <laughs> oh, no, yeah. It's just it's a really effeminate male. No, 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 it's a female. Do you have a female's name? Peña. <laughs> and, and her cool last life. name that's cool colada wow oh! i love pena colada <laughs> if you like pena colada <laughs> bam, 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 bam. someone's phone is on it's, it's mine <laughs> oh it's def- oh yeah. hello <laughs> oh this is so Hi. insane <laughs> miss colada how are you <laughs> holy shit she's is calling something? no, no, no it's, it's mine it's mine it's, oh, okay I just hear the signal that goes travels through oh, the microphone right. out of Jake's butthole into the microphone Excuse again. Excuse you. Oh, wow. It's like a farting static. That's enough. <laughs> you're embarrassing me on air. <laughs> <laughs> and you're putting on airs. So stop both of those things. All right. Pena Colada writes, 
My boyfriend is into the thought of me sucking another guy's dick. He's never had any, I was gonna say, cool, man. <laughs> <laughs> he's never had nice. he's end. never had any of his exes do this, and I've never given a guy a blowjob who was who I wasn't in a serious relationship with. What he wants me to do is to give a guy a blowjob while filming it, and then I'll send to my boyfriend the video. I'm fine with this. The only problem is I don't know how to go about it. I've lost my virginity to my current boyfriend, and I have given him, I've given a blowjob to a previous boyfriend, but never hooked up with anyone or even kissed a guy that I wasn't dating. Wow. How do I meet a guy to make something like this happen? And should I tell him the video is for my boyfriend or just lie and say it's for myself so he's less uncomfortable? We are both 18, and I can't drink until we're 19, so I can't meet anyone at a bar or anything. Any advice would be helpful. P.S. If it helps, we've been in a relationship for two years, monogamously the entire time, and are long distance. Oh. Hmm. A lot of okay, curveballs well, the, the in there. The long distance thing makes more sense as to why he wants this video, because then he just watch her. Yeah, it's like, I want to watch a porn starring you. Yeah. For sure. But how is she going to find a guy to blow? <sighs> yeah, I, that does not seem hard. <laughs> how, long, how long ago did we and get a 30 guys lining up yeah. this e- email? Uh, we got it February 28th. I wonder uh, if she's so done it yet. I Two hope weeks. there's still time. You have to not do this. Yeah. What? She's 18 years old and she wants to send a guy she's dating a video of her blowing somebody. That's not the question. Do the not question. do no, that. How to get the blow. <laughs> the, that's not hard to come by. No pun intended. Oh, but <laughs> I do really feel like she should not do it. Yeah. I think that it's not a good idea to have a video of you doing that, especially with someone you don't trust. The videos with someone you don't trust and the I mean you trust your boyfriend, but like you're gonna maybe not be together always. Right, and he'll have this video of you when you were young and when you get older, that video will always exist. It's like the Kim Kardashian thing where like that worked out for her, but like we're not all that lucky. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> like, there's a video. I have a sex tape with Ray J too and nobody wants to see it. <laughs> um, so you, this would be your advice even if a guy wanted to videotape his own lady. I just don't think it's necessarily a good idea at this point in your life. If you were, I, I and I, not, I don't mean to be like ageist or anything. I just feel like if you were older and making that decision, there's a, a little bit of a difference there. But it feels like something you're kind of being peer pressured into. It's not your idea. Yeah, that's a good thing. Right. You don't true. necessarily find this hot. She's doing this to please this guy. Yeah. I feel like the maximum, maximum, and I wouldn't even do this, is like you could blow Blowing a dildo. Guys. Oh, a dildo, right? Yeah. Uh, there's porn where there's like clearly a fake dick and somebody blows it. That being said, don't do it. Not even the dildo. I don't think that no, this is... No, that'll be embarrassing right. to you later. It's going to come out. Someone's going to get their hands on What's the tape. What's the next? Iter- like her eating a carrot. What can we give this Suck a guy? baby carrot. <laughs> so could she suck a baby carrot or would you also say or, no to that? What about just doing it on Skype? Oh, so oh like, yes, it's not a video that he can keep. So right. she's I mean, blowing there is, a guy on Skype. No, 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 not that. <laughs> but I think there, it is possible to capture, do like a screen capture on Skype. So as long as she knows that this dude isn't, you know, downloading any ridiculous technology to make sure that he has this video forever, uh huh. Maybe it's. I mean, like. He, you know what? <laughs> Here's what I think she should do. <laughs> Start from the top. If you really want to do this for this guy, I think it should be in person. The guy's there in the room. He watches it. He can jerk off to it forever the rest of his life. Yeah, he'll and have a mental no image. there's no video. Wow, that's interesting. Yeah. So it's like a live theater. And yeah. it's safe for you because you're with someone you don't know, but your guy's there and whatever. I just feel like there's That's like... a harder play. Can yeah. Anybody can convince a girl to blow a guy. Yeah. Can you convince a girl to blow a guy with their boyfriend in the room? Yeah, that happens all the time. That's what Thrinder is. People are like Thrinder. Yeah, threesome. It's Tinder for threesomes. Holy moly! I never heard of this. Really? Yeah. Oh, people are into all kinds of kinky stuff, and it's all great. And everybody should be into whatever makes them feel good, as long as they're not sending illicit videos videos to their boyfriends. Because that shit, dude. I Let's mean, put a he's price gonna show on his it. friends. He's gonna. There's just something about it. I just don't think it sounds good. Yeah, it doesn't. And I've sent pictures of my penis out there in the world, and I, so I'm not like saying. I, I don't know. I'm a little bit of a hypocrite, but I'm still going to say Was your it. face in the pictures? Sure was, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and that is the question everyone asks, and the, the answer is always yes. <laughs> it was not a good Yeah, look. but your face wasn't in it, right? <laughs> it was in it. The face was in it. I also Next have an identifying dick. tattoo. So. <laughs> <laughs> I assure you, it was my penis. Next to my dick was a baby carrot to scale. <laughs> 
Uh, so we're not even going to give our advice on how to find the guy. We're just I mean, I don't say, think it would be hard to find a guy. If you put your feelers out there, you're going to find someone who wants you to suck their dick. I just don't think on it's a good On camera idea. to send to the boyfriend? I don't think it's that hard. Don't you think a lot of guys would just do that? They wouldn't care. Yeah, I would do it. You would do it? For sure. That, like, can I blow you, take a video, and send it to my boyfriend? Well, I would probably try to talk them out of sending the video to the boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> Just because that's my dick. <laughs> uh, well, I, yeah, because I don't think that, I think that's a pretty dangerous move. But doesn't it seem like it's too risky? Like, you wouldn't want to be involved up in that? If I could shoot it, like, if I'm not, like, my face isn't in it. I know, I learned my lesson. <laughs> Like yeah. the iPhone has to be attached to my chin. It's funny how I was so against it until I thought about like me getting want? a blowjob. Then I was like, oh, actually, this is a cool idea. Yeah. Wait, what were you saying? I feel like that would be a better way for the guy to get is having the he's holding the camera. The POV. So it's like a great view for like the boyfriend. He doesn't have to see the other guy's face, and the main <laughs> yeah. guy gets to feel like he's in control of like a porn. What right. if she does it and it's a black guy? It's. <laughs> I've been picturing really... a black guy the entire time. <laughs> yeah, these aren't. It's not three black people. No, it is. All right. <laughs> uh, I th- I think Lauren's right with the POV POV angle. That guy. Then he doesn't like. Nobody knows who. <laughs> now who you're he directing knows. the video. <laughs> I would love. I would love. What you to... want to do is get a shot reverse well, shot. Let's establish. Well, Lapius is wide. directing. I was going to DP. <laughs> <laughs> not the yeah, DP I need you're thinking credit. of. Yeah, I this credit. I need to get in the DGA, baby. <laughs> and your your deadline announcement for the Netflix. Yeah. <laughs> you know her from Jurassic World and that porn where a guy <laughs> blew got blown by a girl. Uh, all right. This was a fun one. That was a good question. That a lot of good. layers. It was an onion, yeah. which is why we're all crying <laughs> for the future. Uh, thanks for coming on the show. Oh, my gosh. Thanks for having me. Thanks for answering questions. Yeah. Thanks for helping advise. If people want to, if people want more Lauren Lapkus, where should they steer their eyeballs? You can follow me on Twitter at Lauren Lapkus or <gasps> Instagram. Hell yeah. Um, and that's it, man. You snapping? I got, I just downloaded Snapchat. It's yeah. time you um, got it. I know, but I'm like I cannot figure it out. I don't know why. I was there six months ago. I was there. Yeah, I now don't even get it. how to do anything. I don't. I I actually just don't get it. I it's feel a little old. scary because every time you take a, I, my my brother taught me, and I was like. I took a picture. I was like, well, I don't want to put that on my story. <laughs> it, can yeah. everyone see this? Who sees this? <laughs> yeah. It's very scary. There's a lot of pressure. Yeah. There's I'll a lot. figure it out. Once you do, I feel like that's the the next move. Yeah. Follow me on Snapchat. I mean, I have an account. I just haven't done anything yet. Oh. Be What's good your name on Snapchat? I think it's Lauren Lapkus. I'm not very creative. Hell cool. yeah. No, that's yeah. branding. That's, that's good. I find me. Early adopter. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I got there before another Lauren Lapkus. There's literally <laughs> not another one in the world. Is it really Is it not? not? As far as Google says. Really? Oh, yeah. Is there another, uh, I guess, your family, but are, is there a, a non family Lapkus? I think I'm related to all of the, we say Lapkai. Oh, <laughs> so, yeah. very nice. Anyone, that's a, anybody I found online is a relative of mine somehow. So that's I don't cool. Know. Yeah. That's a fun thing you say at like family reunions. Yeah, right? the Lapkai. <laughs> yeah. It's just you and your uncle. Yeah. <laughs> uh, cool. So if you have your own questions for us or your own theme songs, the email address for everything is if I were you show at gmail.com. We'll be back next week with more stuff. The opening theme song was written by Josh Friedman, and this closing one was written by Rob Jehan, Yehan, J E H A N. How would you pronounce that? Yehan. J E H A N. J H E N. Jehan? Wait, how do you spell it? The, the second half of the podcast is us trying to pronounce this name. John. Jian. Jian. Rob Jian. Rob J. Thanks, Rob J. Thanks, Josh Friedman. Thanks to you guys. Thanks, Lauren, for coming. Bye. Thank you. We'll be back next week. Bye. Yeah.
Still here, aren't you? Oh, you are getting a you are a sneaky little tit mouse constantly it. looking for more cheese. Well, guess what? We have a nice little hunk of Swiss for you. <laughs> uh, 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 not so fast. First, give us your credit card number. <laughs> what does it start with? Come on, just the first four digits. Four three one one. <laughs> okay, we're getting closer. <laughs> Uh, we wanted to remind you guys one last time about Lonely and Horny. Yeah, we wouldn't push it so hard if we weren't really proud of it. And uh, if we didn't want people to see it. Because we think our fans will like it as much as we do. Uh, and if you want to get that coupon, you want to get the discount, you don't want to spend the full $15 on this new web series, it's which is 10 hard. episodes of roughly 9 minutes each. Uh, we understand. But there's a coupon code for you, and it's HORNY. And that'll give you 15% off your pre-order. You can save a little bit of Skrilla, folks. Your pre-orders mean that you'll get to watch the show, which we're really excited about. It, it impresses uh, the higher-ups at Vimeo, who had no idea we'd be able to pre-sell that many. Yeah, which bodes well for a season two. And by the way, we are also... I'm opening every single snap I get sent with the... Uh, yeah. With, with the confirmation. Been getting a lot of those. Loving them. The tweets with the... Uh, with the confirmation too. It's great. And there's so many people have pre-ordered, but so many people haven't yet, including myself. Yeah. I just keep putting it off. If enough people pre-order, you will pre-order. So let's say you're in front of a computer right now. You've been putting it off uh, for weeks and weeks and weeks. Uh, it'd be really helpful. And uh, we'd be very thankful if you were to pre-order Lonely and Horny at LonelyandHorny.com. We bought the domain. Mm-hmm. LonelyandHorny.com. Uh, I think we'll be back on Thursday this week. So don't miss us too much because we're only gone for three more days. Uh, and thanks for listening. We'll be back soon. Peace. That was a HeadGum Podcast.